Like the song is my boo and you're yeah. thinking about Lola Pickles. Yeah. You're like, aww. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited to do this video because this is my my stuff right here. I am here with my one of my favorite people in the world. Oh, favorite. The beautiful, my, the favorite of yeah. mine, Alyssa Sue. This is my sister. You guys have seen her here on the channel and I'm very fortunate to have her here for this video because if you guys follow along, you know I do fitness and nutrition, but there's a part of me that's super duper girly and loves makeup. And I've loved makeup since a young age. We both have. Absolutely. But yeah. you like definitely enhanced my interest in beauty and like makeup YouTubers. Like I wasn't even really into makeup YouTubers until like three years ago, I'd say, when you were like, you have to watch Tati and Kathleen Lights and all these people and I've been so in it that that's where my whole paycheck goes pretty like, much yeah. every time so it's one of my favorite things to talk about me and Alyssa snapchat each other every day like our makeup looks what we're wearing we do wear tests for each other so we thought it'd be really fun today to share with you guys some of our beauty favorites and just kind of like current faves that we're reaching for and things in our everyday routine um, and we're also drinking some wine, which I feel like we should share. It's a girls' night. It's a girls' night. It's a Friday night. This is a pretty big deal for me. This is my bedtime, actually. I know. So. I was like, I'm getting a little tired, but let's do a full face and review all this makeup. So we're going to jump on in for you guys to some of our favorites. And I think we'll like kind of go step by step, like how you would apply makeup, right? I feel like that makes most sense for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but disclaimer, because I didn't actually end up doing it, this is going to be a no judgment zone because my makeup, although I spend a lot of money on it, it doesn't look like it. It's dirty, it's gross, it's got you makeup all over it. actually picked out better stuff than what you could have for your yeah, collection. It's, so. it's a mess in there. We are drinking the 19 Crimes The Finisher. Uh, compliments of Babs Houdon. Thanks, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thanks for getting us lit tonight. <laughs> so do we want to start with, like, prep and prime the skin? Do you normally moisturize before? I do. Okay. Well, I just got that sunscreen stuff that you suggested, that Ulta. Oh, Ulta, Ulta MD. But mine's not... Tinted? Tinted. So I had been putting a lot more stuff on my skin, but, yeah. like, it pills up. Like, I can't use, like, too much stuff on my skin. So right. I've just been using the Ulta... Is it Ulta or Elta? I think it's Elta. Elta MD. It's like a... Um, uh, Dermatologist recommended like sunscreen. Sun, sunscreen, but also like moisturizes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty moisturizing. So that's one thing as I get turning into an old lady, like... Uh, mature age, we like to say. Okay, mature. <laughs> I'm trying to... Mature skin. Um, sunscreen. Yes. A lot more. And stay in... Same. Um, I tanned for a long time tanning beds and stuff like that mm -hmm. so I'm avoiding that and yeah whatever right anyways sunscreen first sunscreen first that's great yeah. so you do it even like if you're not going to be out in the sun like I'm bad I about have, that I have been just using it just because like because that's another like rabbit hole that I've gotten down on like um YouTube is like skincare yeah people or whatever so um, I've been watching a lot of skincare people and like even like sitting in front of a window and like oh, on a cloudy true. day I guess you can still get like yeah the harmful rays and stuff like that. So okay. yeah, but you've it, motivated me to use my yeah, sunblock but it only lasts it. for so long So I and don't then really you're supposed to reapply. Yeah, how do you reapply when you have a full face of makeup you on? You really can't. Do you guys know? Comment yeah. below if you do. I don't I'm not good about sunblock unless I'm gonna be in front of the sun But I have been using like for a morning moisturizer the Bobbi Brown vitamin enriched face base this one's kind of an oldie but a goodie if you will like i remember using this in my 20s and it was a big deal because it's expensive like i could not afford this it's yeah like, like how much does that cost it's like 65 dollars right. and but you don't need a lot it's super super thick it smells like lemon so mm. i have been trying to avoid fragrance and but i haven't noticed anything negative from using this so i do like to moisturize my skin with this in the morning because I have acne prone skin and I've been using an oily skin lately. So I've been using a cleanser that's kind of been starting to make my skin really dry. So I've been finding this like helps as like a base. Yeah. So I kind of yeah, I know like, a lot of people rave about that too. Yeah. So have you used it? I haven't. 
So I usually use that and like I let that set in for a few minutes. I don't know if you need to, but I do because I feel like you need to like let it set in. Mm. And then this looks like I'm super cheap because this is the tiniest primer ever, but I'm Sephora Rouge. Is that the highest level? I think so. So I have like a bajillion points. Um, so the Tatcha, the Silk Canvas Primer, actually Alyssa got me for Christmas last year. It came in a gift set. And I didn't think I was gonna like it or find it to be anything special. And again, this is more of a luxury item, um, but I do really like this to help fill in my pores around my T-zone, but also I find it helps, I really personally do find it helps my makeup stay on all day, which is important to me. So I kind of slather this on a bit more than like, the normal person i'm like casey holmes style like right. i dig in me right. and casey holmes are like on that level i yeah. dig in i smear on the face and lock it in and i feel like it's really helpful so this is something that i repurchased from the recent sephora sale i got a full size item which is like 52 bucks so but expensive. i got the 20 percent off and that's why i was like Ugh, might gonna, as well get your expensive if stuff. i'm gonna pull the trigger yeah. let's do it now yeah. so those are my go-to's for primer um, and then on occasion, I'll also do the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Coconut 3-in-1 Primer Water. Mm -hmm. I like that. To start out with. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll, I'll do that in the morning too, depending on if my skin feels like it needs a drink. From bougie to budget. Right? Um, <laughs> Love that. The True Match Lumi Glotion. And this is like the medium shade. I think I was using dark. I have the dark. And I feel like it looks muddy underneath my makeup. Oh, okay. Um, this one I really like just because it does give me a little bit of color and then gives me like the glow underneath mm -hmm. the makeup or Love whatever. Love that. Um, people say it's like the Charlotte Tilbury, Tilbury stuff that's like eight hundred dollars. Oh, yeah, that, the like, highlight. I feel like I would I would love to have it. Yeah. But I also don't That's, think I could spend $44 or $45 on, like, something to go underneath my makeup. I don't no. know. I'm just not that bitch I, don't I know, know. <laughs> but if that's a good dupe for it then like that's why what I'm not saying. Like, you know just give me the dupes and I'll buy eight of them like so. L'Oreal has like it's probably one of my favorite drugstore brands yeah I mean I wish all makeup brands would go cruelty free but I'm not cruelty free unfortunately right um I haven't made that step in my makeup but I wish makeup brands would go cruelty free because I think that's un it's just unnecessary but, right agreed um yeah, so that's it for me. That's it for priming for you? Yeah. Okay, so next up is foundation. So I have like 17 foundations, so for me it was really hard to choose like my top because I feel like I kind of rotate through them based on what my skin's doing, if I'm dry that day, mm. if I'm oily. So I go both ways. So I have mattifying foundations, I have um, more luminous foundations, and then depending on the color of my, my self-tanner, you know, and then even sometimes I'm like, screw it i'm just gonna pull that bitch down my neck and call it a day and y'all won't know any different i don't have light makeup and dark makeup I you just, don't no my skin color is just a suggestion to me <laughs> so <laughs> i go with dark okay yeah i like that i'm gonna practice more and of i that. just i go down my neck yeah. and i just deal with the makeup all over my uh, clothes that's what i was gonna say that's the only thing that drives me nuts is then it gets on like your shirts and stuff. Yeah, I just deal with it. You that. just deal with it. Yeah. Okay, I'm here for it. Um, so the foundation that I've really been loving was really impressed with, and it's what I'm wearing on my skins today. And I don't feel like it gets enough hype. This is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie. It's a long wear foundation and concealer as well. So it's really kind of cool because it's got the pump, but then you can also, I want to say there's an applicator in here. I've never used it as such, but you've oh also got the applicator in here if you want to use it that. for concealer. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool, right? So yeah. this one I think is cool because it has like a lot of claims on it. Um, this one does have, I thought it has SPF in it. I could be wrong. Um, we don't need to go through all the claims, right? No. Like, I'm not Tati. You guys aren't here for this. But I just want to say I like it because a little goes a long way, and it gives me a full coverage moment. And nine times out of ten, I'm looking for a full coverage moment. Like, yeah. you guys don't know it, and that's what I always get scared of when people meet me in person when I'm makeup-free because I can cover it so well with makeup. But, you know, I have tons of hyperpigmentation. Same. I have acne spots, I have bumps, I have indents from scarring when I had acne as a 
18. Mm -hmm. Like the skin alone, it's it's got some shit to work on. So I'm always looking for a full coverage moment that I can achieve without using like having to cake it on. I don't like to feel like I'm wearing a ton of makeup, right? But I like my stuff to be covered. Same. So, and yeah. this, so this does it for me. So if you guys are that same person, the pure is really good. Um, this is a tan one, so that's why I look nice and tan tonight. The rest of me is not, but I actually bought this at Kohl's. Yeah. Did you know you could buy makeup at Kohl's? Oh, yeah. I've spent some time in there Yeah, before, like, like, I don't know if it's any cheaper. I don't think so. I think, I think this was, like, a $25 one. Maybe they have, one. like, deals or whatever in yeah. there that, like, you, you could use a coupon, get... maybe. Right. But, wow. um, so this is my current favorite, but I just wanted to throw in a drugstore, um, one as well. I don't think you liked this one. It doesn't look good on my skin. Um, this is the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover. This one does have SPF 50 in it and it's a again a full coverage. I personally don't find it to be as full coverage. I thought it was like more like a tinted moisturizer. I yeah. didn't understand like the coverage claim. I, I definitely feel like it's more medium to light. Maybe it's just me, but I do like the way it feels on my skin. It gives me like a little bit of luminosity. It's like a combo between luminous and matte, I feel like. It doesn't last as long wearing as something like the Pure, but it's another option. So, How about for you for current foundation faves? Um, <laughs> the Maybelline, what is this? The Super Stay. The Super Stay full coverage. I love this one. Um, and this one is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Fresh Wear one. I absolutely hated this you one. You hated it, it at first. I've bought, I've gone through like three of those. I was going to say, this is like my third or fourth bottle. Yeah. So I learned to love it somehow, yeah. but I really like mixing these because this one's really oh. thick and this one's very thin. So this one doesn't cover all my hyperpigmentation that I have. Right. So if I do two squirts of this, one squirt of this. Then you're good. Really good. And this one's more, they're both matte, but this one breaks down on me. Like I get oily by the end of the day. Like yeah. I do massage. So it's like by the end of the day, like my oils have come out or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this one helps, I feel like more keep me matte. So, or it contains my oils better right. if I mix them. So. I've never tried mixing the two of those. Yeah. I love mixing foundations. Um, my other two that I really loved was... Um, the was it the L'Oreal Pro Glow? The Pro Glow the and Pro the Pro Matte. The Pro Glow combo. and the Pro Matte. I would mix those, and to apply it, I and I even with this still, I will, I apply it with my fingers Do you? to get the thinnest layer. Oh yeah. And the best coverage, and then I'll take a beauty blender and kind of like pick up the excess and stuff like that. I feel like that gives yeah. me the best coverage. So I love both of those. I've never tried mixing them though. The Superstay, I felt like I was using that consistently, like every single day. Yeah. I felt like that one was clogging my pores. It could have. So been. that's why I kind of stopped because I thought maybe, you know, with getting breakouts that that was maybe too full coverage. But right. the L'Oreal Infallible, that's my other favorite. The only reason why I'm not using that one right now, I like that better than my Maybelline one, is just because mine's in like a lighter color. Right. It's like a vanilla color. Right. So. Um, and again, like my shades, what is this one? Natural beige yeah. and whatever 460 is, golden beige, um, not the actual color of my skin. So these are like probably like four or five shades darker. Like if you look at my hairline right now. Oh my God, the hairline gets the, scary. The hairline, if you look here, it's white and then... We're golden right now. I know. You know? I love how tan we I'm glad I put on my darker foundation for this video or yeah. else I would have looked like Casper. Yeah. Um, okay. So concealer next, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we conceal after. So I have two um, and I do these kind of different. So like if I wasn't using my pure foundation, um, depending on how my skin looks, sometimes what I do is prior to applying foundation, I'll conceal my breakouts first. What's my hair? I'll conceal my breakouts first before I apply the foundation. Yeah. And what I like for my breakouts is the It Cosmetic Bye Bye Breakout. I've repurchased this now. This is my second bottle of it. I get it in the color light. And this does, I feel like it's for acne, oily prone skin, which is me to a T. I really like It Cosmetics and the ingredients that they use as well. I've been paying more attention to that because I don't want to be like 
caking stuff onto my acne when I'm trying to clear out my skin. Yeah. So I think that's really important. This is really good. I just apply just like a little bit to my hyperpigmentation or my what is like acne the, spots. Is it salicylic acid that's I think in there's uh, salicylic acid in it, yeah. This doesn't have the ingredients listed on here, so I can't remember now, but oh, yeah, yeah. it's really good. Jason hates my pig this slippers. Is like the intermission. <laughs> Jason's gonna be so mad. He's like, don't wear your pig slippers on camera. Why? Because <laughs> he hates them. Oh my god. He oh. hides them on me. They're so cute. I don't know where they are right now. Uh, I've gotten a lot of compliments on them. Wait, um, how do you get compliments on house slippers? Um, okay, you sound 90 that you call them house slippers, <laughs> number one. Like, who fucking calls them house slippers? Well, I don't wear them outside, so <laughs> I just wear them in the house. Jason's mom calls them house shoes, I oh, think. Oh god. <laughs> Oh, well, my, I'm old tomorrow. You're officially, it's her birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday mm. tomorrow. Um, you look younger than me, so it's fine. You have that. You definitely don't look your age. We'll just keep that going. We'll keep it that way. We, we got some good genes up in here. So yeah, Bye Bye Breakout. I don't use that for like under eyes, but acne spots. So I use that as needed. And then my tried and true that I've um, repurchased consistently. I've tried so many. I do have other ones I love, but I continue to go back to the Tarte Shape Tape. I used to hate it because I felt like I have dry under eyes that it was making it worse. Mm -hmm. But I think I've been able to kind of, now that I'm more oily, that's kind of resolved. And I feel like this does work the best. Right. Um, I've also recently done the Jeffree Star concealer. I really, really love that. Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like it doesn't conceal my darkness as well as the Tarte Shape Tape, but the one you're going to show, um, I love. Love, love, love. I just don't have it in the right color. Mine looks like white out. Yeah, they're, the shades are weird. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> So that's not getting old, is it? No, not for me at least. <laughs> um, so Tarte Shape Tape, been working on this puppy for, like I said, a year and a half or something. Um, do you not use a lot of concealer? I don't. Do you just do like a dot? Are you like because Tati, this, like a dot and a dot? Because if I use too much, it cakes up. Like So I'm like Casey I Holmes. Just, I, I smear it on and I yeah. bring that bitch down my cheek. Yeah, I don't. It's too much for me. Yeah. Like... Um, so this one's medium, light medium sand, which I feel is like kind of dark. Oh, oh, fuck. Sorry. Did you get on your pants? Yes, God damn it. Do you want me to get something Full for coverage it? moment on my pants. On her new Buff Bunny Rosa leggings I bought for her birthday. Yes. Discount code Kara. <laughs> Big slippers. I was trying to show the pants. It didn't work. I can't lift my leg that high. I'm a 39 year old lady. What do you want? Um, so I what have I like fair to do, light neutral. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That one's pretty light. Yeah, it is. Um, so I take this, I do like one dot where I'm like the darkest and then this one's a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so you use both of them. Poop, poop. Yep. And then I blend it out and it's oh. to me that like they're so, these are really similar. I feel like, yeah. um, yeah. But I think Tarte Shape Tape just has a lot more, um, sh the shade range is a lot better, whereas the e.l.f. ones are slightly weird. Like, this one's medium sand, and it's pretty light. Like, it looks light in the tube. So It does look really light. That's what I was going to ask. Do you try to create, like, a lighter situation in your under eye? Yeah. 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 So I've done that, too, with the Tarte Shape Tape. I've mixed it with the Jeffree Star Concealer. Yeah, that one looks super white, too. So I didn't know how to order my color, and I was just kind of acting quickly. I hate the applicator, I'm going to be honest. I don't like it. I don't like... I don't like the packaging whatsoever. Do I. It works for him. I get. I get it. But I'm not, like... I'm not, like, into it, but the formulation of his products, I feel like, is really good. This was C8. It's just a little too light, so sometimes I do mix that with my Tarte Shape Tape for my under eye situation, but I've noticed when I only use this on YouTube videos, I'm like, ooh, girl, that's, like, way too light on right. your under eyes with, like, the studio lights. Right. So that's conceal. After we conceal, we go and powder oh, them yeah. under eyes. Um... Currently not what I'm using, but probably my favorite. So I'm currently using the Hourglass, um, the Translucent Veil. I do really like it, but I don't, I have very dark 
under eyes, like very, very dark, um, deep set under eyes. So like that's like one of my insecurities that I'm always trying to cover up. And I like this, but I don't feel like it does as good of a job covering it up as my Peach Perfect powder, which mm -hmm. I've I find it very hard to use an entire container of setting powder. Oh my god, I've gone through so many. And this one is the. Um, <clears throat> are there different colors on there, this? There is now. Oh, okay. I think okay. there's a couple, but that one's like the original. This is just like the original. This lasted me over a year, and I used it. It's great for your full face, but on the under eye, this does not get enough hype. Like this is so good yeah. on the under eye. Doesn't dry it out. Doesn't crease creates a nice very smoothing. smoothing moment so for us mature under eyes it just looks really really great so i'm going to continue the hourglass i've been using this one um sometimes on my full face as well but i See, like i wouldn't set your under eyes with that because of the luminosity it's in so it. fine that i don't yeah. know you don't feel like it like kind of like um catches or whatever like yeah i mean i'm wearing it right now what do you yeah. think yeah, I think the the peach one is better. It's better. Yeah. I think so too. For like a luminous, it's just so finely milled that I feel like if you put it on anything like really wet, it just, it clings. Whereas that yeah. one's more of like, it's a good like all over powder. Right. Yeah. The mineral veil. Yeah. Is that what it is? Translucent mineral veil? Yeah. Whatever. And it's got like a luminescence to it. It does. Yeah. So that would be my recommendation for under eye, but I'm not going to buy it yet because I can't say I'm cheap but I have like 14 other setting powders so I can't really right yeah yeah powders are something that like I've never found my favorite you're perfect I did really like the peach perfect I've used um I had got like a pretty vulgar one in like a boxy charm when I was doing boxy charm and I really liked that yeah but I never repurchased them because I'm like it's still not it's like you're still searching when I'm you're still for searching for the perfect one i didn't turn 12 yet doing my makeup so <laughs> um right now i'm currently using the color oh. no filter setting powder and translucent how's that um it's all right yeah i've never I used mean, that one like it was like i think eight dollars or something like that so Can't beat their prices um you get eaten 8.5 grams so it's very little but mm -hmm. this has lasted me for like at least four months or something like wow. that and I still have probably like about a third of it left um it's not the best but it's not the worst I've used it I like it enough to keep using it or whatever um so that's so. just for under eyes you use it for um I pretty much when I I powder my under eyes and then I kind of like smooth the powder everywhere right oh okay. i'll use like a little bit and kind of like set around my face to i so nothing gets i do sticky. my under eyes and then i always do my smile lines i, I try to like that. bake in my smile lines right like my oily points so like my smile lines and sometimes my chin right and right here i didn't mean to flip you guys off but right that was just the finger i chose to use yeah so um Okay, next. So is that it for, do you do any other powder on your face? I do have other powders, like, um, they just weren't worth, men like, I got, they like, weren't a, men I got, like, a mentioning. Becca one from, like, TJ Maxx, like, okay. recently or whatever, yeah. and I was really excited about it, because it was a giant thing of powder, and it was Becca, and it's, like, pink and luminescent, but it sucks, so... I make. Okay. I still use it because I bought it. I'm one of right. those people that if you'll I buy, make it work. If I buy it, I'm going to use it. So, so this is not like a popular opinion or approach, but so I do my under eyes, but then I always set my entire face with something else because I am more oily prone. So I like to try to like mattify it. Um, and a lot of this is this looks horrible. It looks great. <laughs> This it's looks, just well loved. This looks awful. It is well loved. This is the Fenty Buter, Buter, yeah. mm -hmm. Buter. This is the Fenty Beauty setting powder, um, the Pro Filter powder, and I know a lot of people use this for just their under eyes. And this is gonna sound weird, but I do have it in the banana color, and that's what I set my face with. So that's what? that's what my face is set with right now. What, what do you think of that? I mean, she is working. Right? Yeah. I know. It's like a weird thing. You wouldn't think Why that... aren't you using that under your eyes? I don't like it on my under eyes. Oh. So that's the thing. I bought it for my under eyes. Is it too Hate dark? It. 
Um, it's not too dark. I find it creasy oh. in my under eye. Okay. I found it very creasy. It is very like um, fragranced smelling. Or maybe it's not. Did I make that up? Maybe I can only smell it when I put it on my face. It has like a baby powder scent to it. I it's smell like a light vanilla scent. Yeah, it smells nice when you put it on your face. Yeah. Um, a lot of people hated this powder, but again, I felt like they all reviewed it for just setting the under eye. I love this for setting my full face for something like mattifying. Mm -hmm. I really, really like it. Um, I feel like it does kind of help lock the makeup in. Um, doesn't add any color. It is the banana color, but I feel like it doesn't... Still looks translucent on the Yeah, skin. like it doesn't matter what foundation I'm using. It looks nice on the skin. So just um, a thought. I know it's very different. Not a lot of people talk about it, but that's kind of my go-to um, lately. I don't know if there's talc in here. I have been trying to stay away from talc, though. Right. I, a lot of them do. I'm, I mean, but I haven't know. noticed any issues. The only one I noticed issues with was that Laura Mercier one. Right. Mercier. Mercier. That one definitely caused me, like, the little bumps Bumpies. under the skin. So I use that. Um, what else do we do next? Bronzer? Do you bronze next? Oh, hells yeah. Okay. Show us your bronzer. Um, I really haven't get... found my perfect bronzer yet. Oh, my God. It's this. Is it? I love this bronzer. Uh, um, and I hope it lasts me forever because it costs a lot of money. It is the Marc Jacobs tan Tantric Omega Bronze. I mean... I love the packaging. I won't do that to you guys, I know. But it's huge. It's... You get a lot of product. And I just love the color of it. And, like, I always had issues with bronzer, like, getting super patchy and stuff like that. Yes, I get um, that. This one, like, I feel like it always looks good. That one's dark enough for your skin? Hells yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I use a giant fluffy brush, and I'm just like... Go to town? I go for it hard. Could you stop making that motion? <laughs> <laughs> so I use this, or I use, like, the butter bronzer. Uh, and I, like have like a, bronzer. I have, like, a really dark <clears throat> one. I don't know what the color is, but I like that one, too. But sometimes that one patches up my skin, so it kind of depends. I feel like I still haven't found my perfect bronzer, and with the Sephora sale, I did order the, I splurged and ordered the Hourglass, mm. one of their bronzers, which, again, I don't know if I chose the right one. The one I have been using, again, the packaging looks shit. This is Fenty Beauty, again, and this is the Island Ting, mm. which I love that I name. Like Thank you, yeah. Rihanna. Um, the Instant Warmth Bronzer. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, that looks dark, too. Yeah. It is pretty dark. I do feel like sometimes it's, I don't know if it's my application, but I feel like it can get a little bit patchy. But what I have found is using like a cream bronzer, like a cream contour first to apply it has helped a little bit. Um, this does have talc in it, though. So, and I have noticed like some little, like, spots. Skin little, little, so. Yeah, so I'm not, that's where I think the talc is bothering me. That's why I ordered the, um, hourglass one but i do like this bronzer i want it to smell like coconut but it doesn't oh yeah no no right no probably better for your skin though it doesn't smell that's true a fragrance we should stay away from that yeah that's bronzer I feel like you could have gone hard on blush and you only have one over there. Because I feel like you are a blush. I am a blush whore, but like I have found what I love. See, like, I brought a blush, but like you don't love it? I'm not. I like I br will bronze the shit out of my cheek. Are you not a blush lover? Not really. Oh. I always like cuz I think because I do a lot with my eyes. Yes. That I feel clownish. Clownish. I, I get that. And, and I, then I'm always looking for a blush that just looks like a bronzer and I'm like, why don't I just use a bronzer? Those the NYX baked blushes that yeah. you recommended to me, they yeah. were just like I like them, but they were more like a bronzer. Like it right. didn't add the pink hue to the cheek and I'm yeah. I'm always looking to look like a clown. Like <laughs> I love a good pink cheek and I finally I found my perfect blush I have two to share with you guys but again it looks shitty but this one is these are the buxom blushes and this is in the color dolly and it is my favorite color favorite blush so when I'm looking for blush here's the thing it like it can all look good on your cheek immediately but it's crazy how it looks different on camera than like 
It looks darker on camera. It does, yeah, yeah. than if you see it up close. Yeah. Um, it looks like there's like some a little bit of sparkles yeah, it in like it a too. Satin finish or whatever. But these are their primer infused blushes. So I was super intrigued because some of the reviews were just that that it kind of like stayed longer on your cheeks and I find right. that that's really true. I feel like blush is the first to go on a beat face. You know what I mean? Like you lose the blush. Yeah. And I'm someone that like I don't reapply makeup through the day and I want it to last me 10 hours. And this really does. Like, I can still see the blush on my cheeks at the end of the day when I wear this. Okay. So the Buxom, highly recommend if you need, like, a good cheeky moment, if you're into it like I am. Um, but I also love, if you're looking for something long-lasting, long, like that long lasting, yeah. a cream blush is where it's at. I've used RMS before. I really like RMS. That's a great one, too. But then Flower Beauty has the um, blush bombs, and those are super affordable. This is in the color Bubbly. And I always just put like a little bit on my hand first, and I use a beauty blender to apply it, and that stays on all day. And I think that gives me like a little bit more of a dewy look. Mm -hmm. So the cream blush for me is a bit more of like a summer look. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. I dab like on. I wear that, like I'll put that on, like if I'm looking like haggard, Right. And I need makeup for the gym, which is like all the time. So sometimes a little yes. cream blush happens. It goes the, a long yeah, way. Yeah. So it just looks more natural. It does. So those are, that's my fave. Yeah. I used to have like 14 different blushes. I used to be a big um, Bobbi Brown blush person. Yeah. Bobbi Brown or MAC. I was like tried and true before like we got Sephora in the area. Right. So I always did the MAC and Bobbi Brown counters. Right. But Buxom's where it's at, you guys. Mm. So I'm going to save you some coin here. I think that's, we're just going to go to the Milani. That stunk. I've always wondered if those were, like, good. This is really good. Um, you always hear about the Luminosa one because it's supposed to be, like, NARS Orgasm or whatever. Which, side note, you remember we got, like, those little tiny Sephora ones? Yes, they lasted forever. Literally still have it. It was, like, a birthday gift Two or something. Two years ago or something like that. I like, think I still have little mine. Little tiny 100-point NARS Orgasm. Right. Like, what is the point of buying a full-size blush? You don't need There's to. There's something you never go through. It's, yeah, do you ever hit pan on a blush? Never has happened. I just break them. Mm -mm. Yeah, same. So this one has, like, this one's the Berry Amore. So it's got, like, gold shimmer through it. It's right. like a dark berry or whatever, but I don't know. I think this one like blends in nicely. Is that with what you're my wearing? Bronzer. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really pretty. Yeah. So um I don't know really how well it wears because I don't really I guess pay attention to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So but I would think it would be fine. Yeah. For like eight, nine bucks. It's well, fine. We'll get so do we want to talk about eyes? <clears throat> we'll leave the eyes last. We'll do eyes last. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about highlight. Um, <clears throat> why am I going through puberty all of a sudden? I have 4,000 highlights, and I don't know. There's so many good ones, but my literal favorite, when you guys are always like, what is your highlight? Why do Your I... highlight always <laughs> looks so banging, though. Like, it looks good on camera. It looks great. Like, the lights hit it, and people yeah. are like, you're glowing. Yeah. And Jason's always like, why are you wearing the highlight? Like, it's bothering the camera. <laughs> so my favorite, and this is more expensive. I don't know if they sell them in singles. I bought this in a quad. It is the KK Beauty Highlighter Palette. Um, unfortunately, I just dropped it the other day, and then when Alyssa got here, I, like, did I even drop it? I, like... Dropped it on the counter. Literally two of the colors fell out and on the floor. So it's been a sad evening. But uh, yeah. so the two that are still in here are actually my favorite ones. It's more of like the whitish one and the goldish one. It's just like, can you like get up there? so fun pretending to be a beauty guru. Isn't it? Like, I'm sitting on your hand. I'm sorry. Whoa. That was like a soft swatch, okay? Like a really soft swatch. Let me see. Oh, I love it. Like, they're so good. And they sell, they sell KKW now at Ulta. I bought these off her website. She had a sale a while ago. Um, so I lost the other two colors in there that were more like 
pinky, which I really like too. Like I like I like a good pink. Color. I like a pink too. Like I like them all. Like sometimes I want a pink moment. Sometimes I want more of a white, a gold. You know what I mean? But the KKW for me is the one that's always it makes me look like a, I have a glow from the gods. Mm. So hands down, this one is like this is my go-to when I really want to like, you know, just be popping be popping so then since my pink's broke in my kkw and here's a drugstore dupe the maybelline master chrome is really really good um this one is in the molten rose gold and that one's just like really pretty too it's really pretty like so sometimes i just like that to like enhance the blush a little bit more mm -hmm. but it looks pretty down the nose and everything too so that's more of like a Drugstore dupe, if you will, but those are probably my two faves. What you got? Oh, now so... Now I got highlighter all over my fingers. My honest-to-God most used highlighter is a Wet n' Wild one. Um, this one's in Precious Petals. Oh. Literally, you can see that it's... I love maybe you Wet n' Wild. But it's like... Um, I just hate their packaging. Right. I mean, this is... It breaks. ...quality, but... Right. Um, I don't know what's... I don't know how, even how, know how to describe the color. Is it like champagne-y? Like it is, champagne yeah. gold. I don't know. It's really pretty on the cheeks and like on the side of the face and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I like them. And it just, like some highlighters just look real chalky. Yeah, Do you know the, what I like mean? the chunky chalky. I don't like, like I spent a lot of money on an Anastasia like quad like that. And I just felt like it looked really dry and chalky on my face. And then the other one that I have is a Becca one. Becca's are really good. Becca and Moonstone. And um, they're just really, really smooth. Yeah. So they definitely have some kind of oil in them. So they just look very, like, glowy on the skin. They yeah. melt into They kind of, like, skin. look more natural. Yeah. Um, so love those that. are my two that okay. I love. Okay. Um, eyebrows? We gotta talk about a good eyebrow moment. E even though I'm microbladed, I'm like way overdue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been a minute. So now I always have to like fill in my, I basically have like patches that just don't grow in on my eyebrows. So I used to do the Anastasia, but like there's no need. Like I feel like there's so many so good drugstore options. Yeah. So what I continue to repurchase is the L'Oreal. It's the brow stylist definer. And I use the color dark brunette. Because I do have darker hair and I prefer, like, I know some people like going lighter with their brows. Like, I love a good dark brow. Like, I'm just, I'm into that. So, I like it because it does have the little spoolie on the end and then just the little um, retractable tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that one. Yeah. And my go-to recently is, and I don't know what the shade is. I feel like they only have one shade of this at my local Walmart, but it's the e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. Um, I didn't even know e.l.f. made brow pencils. They make uh, other ones that are cheaper or whatever, but there's something about this one. That's like, really I good. Broken. I was going to cry. Cause... But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's like the color of it is very neutral, and I have dark brow hairs, so this yeah. one just kind of like suits my brows really well. Um, a lot of brow pencils and like even that one, yeah. Um, I would definitely have to use like probably a brunette and the L'Oreal, but yeah. I bought like the blonder, the like the they make like a dark blonde, but it's not pigmented enough, so it's like I'm sitting there like scratching it oh, on. Yeah, no. Whereas this one, I feel like just glides on and it yeah, it's like a quicker application for me because I don't I don't I got time to mess with my brows. No. I have like pubes for brows. <laughs> <laughs> They're like spidery and curly. It's a whole <laughs> mess. So it's a whole situation. You just comb those spidery, whatever. Um, Get them pubes, and then you top them pubes. Oh, with do you... the elf wow brow. Oh, is that which tinted? Which is yeah, which is this is like a light shade, so I kind of like that because I like oh. since I have blonder hair, it highlights them a little bit. I'm so, I should use that. I Just super cheap. Yeah. And it keeps your brows in place because like I'll like hit my face and then all my brows will be pointing down and I'm not into that. Yeah. Yeah, just do yourself. Get a gel so it sits there. Yeah. That's good. That's a lot. 
All right, so next getting into the eyes, I'm gonna admit like most days I don't do any eyeshadow at all and I know I'd probably look cuter if I did, but that's kind of why I pay to have eyelash extensions so that I don't have to. Yeah. But I do love eyeshadow and I'm gonna be letting the eyelash extensions grow out at this point, so I'll be doing more eyeshadow looks. But um, I wanted to quickly like, I guess I just wanted to like mention that my two current purchases, which are the Tati Beauty palette and then I also purchased the Mini Controversy palette by Shane Dawson. So these are kind of the two I've mostly been reaching for just cause I'm like still playing with looks. Um, quite honestly, for like an everyday work look with the mini controversy, I've mostly been utilizing the Diet Root Beer, um, Cry on My Couch, and my boyfriend's purse. So like those three colors, I love my apology. I've been kind of staying in this little four section region. And then the rest to me are just super bright and loud and out of my comfort zone. So I haven't really dabbled in those that much, but I do like like to stick with like a light brown kind of look for work. It's just more everyday for me. Um, so that's really all I've played with on that guy since I do work in a hospital. Like, all right, so we're gonna talk about the Tati Beauty palette because um, we both purchased this volume one, obviously, and we've both been playing with it. Um, I have kind of like mixed feelings about it. I think it's a really good palette, but I don't think it's as usable as I thought it was gonna be for my lifestyle. Like when I think of neutrals palette, there's a lot in here that aren't appropriate for me to wear to work. So I did try to venture into the poet section, um, in particular in the matte section, and my like whole lid was hot pink and I just felt like it didn't look good. Um, so for work, I've been mostly sticking with the Soothe mm -hmm. and Aura in the mattes. Like I've been staying mostly in the mattes using a little bit of the sequin, a little bit of the metallic. The glitters are beautiful. Alyssa's got them on her eyes today, but you will have like a lot of glitter on your face. So that for me is not like a neutral look. Like when I think it's neutral, not, I think work appropriate. It's yeah, the glitters are not work appropriate. Yeah. They're not work appropriate. And even the sequins, they're really pretty, but you do get like a little bit of fallout in your eyes. Yeah. I feel like. So yeah. I'm like still playing with this palette. I have mixed feelings on it. It I feel like I can't grab this for work because number one, it's it's huge, which is nice, but that's not travel friendly to me. A lot of times I get ready at the gym. Number two, I feel like, and you and I have both share similar views on this, Ritual, which is the dark brown color, which is really necessary, I feel like, for an outer corner look. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not that blendable. And I got to say, I feel like the mini breaker here, the mini breaker, the mini controversy, um, I feel like these, the formula on this is, like, a little bit more blendable, you know? Like, the than my apology. I just feel like I can blend those a little bit effortlessly, a little bit quicker, which is really important to me because if I am doing an eye look, I like need to do it in five minutes and be done. Right. This palette stresses me out because I can't, I can't reach for this and be done in five minutes. Right. This is like, we're going to sit down, have a glass of wine, listen to some music yeah. and we got some time to kill yeah. kind of palette. So those are my thoughts on eyeshadow palettes. The one I will say that I do reach for that I feel like is effortless and beautiful is anything by Anastasia from Beverly Hills. And this is the Sultry palette. It's got some really beautiful colors in here. It's got mattes, it's got glitters, and the dark brown here, dystopian, I feel like blends really well. It's also got a black in here, noir, that also looks great in the outer corner. And I just feel like a whole lot less stressed when I utilize this one. You know so what you're gonna do, more or less. If you're kind of thinking about the Tati palette, I would almost like urge you to go this route. So, or the Soft Glam palette. Soft like, Glam is really The bad. Carly Beeble one looks really pretty too. Like yeah. I kind of want that one, but like I have no business buying another palette. Yeah. But I want the ColourPop Coconut Collection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ColourPop makes great shadows. I feel like those are super Those are really user-friendly. User-friendly. They're very easy to travel with. Like and my cheap. My Dream Street palette. And then I have another one, too, that I love. I can throw in my gym bag. I can put on a great neutral look very quickly for work. That's what's important to me for an eye look. Yeah. So I also bought the Tati Beauty palette. 
I love Tati. Um, We're both obs- Tati. If you watch this, I know you won't, but we are obsessed with you. If she did, I would literally. I die. O- I almost I introduced die. you as like massage. This is massage therapist Alyssa because she always introduces. I love it when she has Nurse Erica on. Oh right. I love Nurse Erica. Right. She's so cute. She is cute. So she loves her sisters. She loves her family. She loves like goofy dad jokes, which are totally like our yep. vibe. Yeah. So yeah. we love Tati. We will buy everything she puts out. Pretty much, and we have. Yes, we have. We've bought Halo Beauty, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, this palette I absolutely love, and I love glitters, but I can't wear these to work. Um. And I do like the shadows, like. I will 100% stay away from this this pink, just personally, because these reds don't look good on me. It's just not for my, suited for my skin tone. Yeah, they don't look good on me I was kind of bummed out, because I was hoping Same. she would go for more of like a tone like this. Like I feel like mauve is more of a neutrals tone, but this is yeah. more of a warm palette. And I do love this shade. I think the Soothe shade blends really nice. It the does. Gl- the glitters are great, I think, for parties yes. and like evenings out. And stuff like that. So I still will really use this palette. The black, I think, is very special in this palette, too. Like I think The black the, is great. The black is really nice, and it's deep, and I can blend it's it. It's blendable. And whatever. The dark brown, I do find it is a little bit difficult for me to work on my eye shape, I think. Because... Yeah, we have small eyes. Small eyes. And, and they're hooded. I, exactly. So I don't have a lot of lid space. So it's like you put it down, and then like it's just harder to blend. I think yes. someone with a with a bigger eye the maybe Kathleen Light's lid space is goals right yeah. so and then Kara bought me this last year for my birthday which is the Huda Beauty nude palette um which is just a lot of pinks yeah, and it's pretty. Um, the uh, quality of the shadows is really really easy and this one has like some glitters in it and everything that I feel like it can work I mean, I wear them to work. Yeah. I don't know if they'll work appropriate, but I wear them to work. I enjoy them. I mean, you're massaging in the dark. I feel like you could wear whatever you want, you know? And and I do. So, (laughs) I mean, I wear a brown uniform to work every day, so I feel like I have to, like... You need to, like, cuten up somewhere, because that uniform is not... it's pretty UPS, so... (laughs) Um. Okay, so that's the eyeshadows. Um, I don't really wear mascara with the lash extensions, but when I'm feeling extra special, I do do a bottom lash. And I actually have a drugstore one for you. Um, and that is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist. And I really do like this mascara. Mm-hmm. Um, I did use it on my lashes before I had lash extensions. It's affordable. It's nice and black. <laughs> it's not important. It's got like this, the hourglass wand. It's- yeah. On its, it's last good. Leg, yeah, it it's like. definitely needs to be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's mascara. I haven't had to worry about it in like, oh god, I've probably had it. I've been doing lash extensions since February. That like literally gives me anxiety that you don't wear mascara because I can't I'm, with lash extensions. You're not allowed to. I mean, I wash my mascara off at night now, but like I've had the hardest time like over the years, like just looking at my face without mascara. It's, Frightening. You know what's funny though is that's the one thing I don't like about lash extensions is when I wear eyeshadow, the the shadow falls on your lashes. Like you can see it when I close my eyes. Right. And then my lashes they don't look as dark as right. I want them to look. Yeah. And I just so badly want to put a coat of mascara on them. Yeah. The the one time I had lash extensions, I coated the they, shit. They they will of them. legit fall right out if you do that. So don't do that. But that's Would, why I only got it one time. So Plus, it's really expensive, and the upkeep is, like, crazy. It's rough. So I am a, like, a, like a six-coat mascara kind of girl. Like, I don't like wearing false lashes. Like, I think they're uncomfortable. I have really teeny eyes, so I feel like they don't make, like, eyelashes mm-hmm. made for, like, my tiny little eyes, you know? So we use a whole lot of mascara. Um, and... These are two that I've repurchased like three or four times. Mm. It's the Tardist Tarte mascara. It's the black and gold one. Um, this one has like the, um, it's like a plasticky wand, like a plastic, I don't know how you, it's like 
I don't know, it's plastic. It's not like natural fibers or whatever. So this one like separates and lengthens really well. Ooh, I like that. As the Lash Paradise is like the natural fiber one and it's like the thick, you know, sexy hourglass wand. Right. And this one gives a lot of like thickness to my lash. Mm -hmm. These are the two that I really enjoy. And then I always have work mascaras. So I have like two baby ones in my work bag and it's like a sample size of the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir one. Hmm. Um, and I coat my lashes while like midday at work. Oh my god! like gosh. an extra little zhuzh. That's so extra that you reapply mascara. So literally 16 coats of mascara. <laughs> And do you do uh, eyeliner? Because I don't do any eyeliner either with my eyelash oh, extensions. Yeah. That's is, frowned upon. This is probably like the best. Mm. On. So it's Physician's Formula Eye Booster. And this is like the waterproof one. And oh, cool. The blackest black. And um, I used to use, oh, what is that one? Kat Von D Kat one. Von D was so what I used. It's the same type of tip. It's like the... Um, I like that tip. I don't know what it is. It's like really pointy or whatever. What is it? Is it like a brush tip? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. This one just for me, like, um, mm. I have good wing days and I have very bad wing days. And I would say more or less like I have better wing days when I use this one. I do have from when I was using eyeliner the It Superhero Liner at Cosmetics. It has like a similar tip. Oh yeah, yeah. But I do like the Kat Von D the best. No, that one's felt tip. Yeah, felt tip. This one's brush tip. Mm. Felt tips, I feel like they dry out like super fast. Yeah. If you made it this far, put an eggplant emoji in the comment oh, section. God. <laughs> okay, so for lips, like I do a lot of different stuff. I love a good lip. You guys probably see that from my YouTube videos. I have like, my hair needs a little judge. Um, I like to do a lot of good lip looks, different lip looks. I love a like bold lip. I don't do it a lot, but like my favorite thing, like my more everyday look is obviously a nude. So my go-to is wet and wild. Um, I usually use a wet and wild lip liner. I don't know if I'm missing out. I've never done a luxury lip liner. I've heard great things about like Marc Jacobs, but I can't bring myself to do it. I always do Wet n Wild or NYX. So I normally use like a Wet n Wild. Um, this one's Bare to Comment. It's just a very, you know, nude color. And then my absolute favorite, I love the Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suits. Addicted. I have Dose of Colors, like a couple of those. They're a great formula, but these I think are just as good as those and so much cheaper. My favorite go-to is the Liquid Katsu in uh, Sun Nudes, but sometimes I like to, that's what I'm wearing tonight, and then I also will put a little Caught You Bare Naked. This is super light. That one's kind of a nice shade to put on top of something, like if you wanna just pop it in the middle to lighten it up. And then this one I love in the summertime. Um, it's Shit Got Real, Chic, Chic Got Real. Um, so I just, I love the formulation of these. They're not mattifying. They're just like a nice liquid lip, but they're not too glossy. They're not too matte. They don't dry out your lips and they don't give you the white crusty line when they fade away. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the best. So those are my favorites for lips. So mine are pretty much the same. I have a couple of the liquid cat suits. Um, I didn't know you were going to bring those. That's funny. Yeah. Sun Nudes is like the everyday. And then I have one that's called Cedar Later. This one's a newer one. Um, and that one I'll just use like, I don't use lip liners. I feel like they look weird on me. So mm -hmm. I'll use like a darker one around the edge. And yeah. then I'll kind of like put that in the middle. And then my most repurchased, like I have to have this White Russian Buxom. I have it too. Yeah. I've I bought it several one. times. I love how it feels on my lips. It gives me a creamy kind of like nude look it feels good i love good. the smell of it it smells like a cupcake yeah it's got that minty fresh feeling and i have really dry lips so this is just nice and then i just bought this so do you this set your face count. after okay oh yeah so we're going to setting sprays that's it right yeah does that wrap it up yeah so uh 
setting sprays. I'm not married to one at all, but I like something that sits down my powders. So I've used this one quite a few, or I've bought this. This is probably like my third bottle of this one. So this hmm. is the Milani Make It Dewy setting spray. Um, I've never tried that one. It's all right. You know? It's good. Yeah. Uh, repurchased probably on my fourth bottle, I would say, that I've already shared with you guys is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Coconut. It's a three-in-one primer water, so it's prep, set, and refresh, and that's exactly how I use it. I prep my skin in the morning with it. I normally have a car setting spray, mm. so I'll keep one of these in my car, and like on my lunch break, I'll give myself a little zhuzh, nice. and then, um, yeah, I'll set my makeup with this as well. So I really like this one. Um, other ones that I have loved, um, I have a Cover Effects one right now. I'm not in love with it. I feel like it. I really have to use a blender, a beauty blender after, because it gives me the spots on my face. Mm -hmm. Love the Morphe yeah, setting spray. Yeah, I love spray. the Morphe one. And also love um, Mac Fix It. Oh, Fix Plus. Yeah, Fix I like Plus, that one too. Fix It. <laughs> so let's just do an honorable mention. Honorable of, mention here. Um, our personables. So. This is this is per, 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 perfume as personal, you know. We all right. like to smell a certain way, and it's right. not for everybody. Right. So my go-to scent is something kind of like woodsy and smoky. Mm, um, this is uh, replica um, by the fireplace. Literally, almost out. I'm super sad about it because it's like so good. <laughs> smoky toasted marshmallows, and then I always layer it with something sweeter. Mm. So this is a new favorite of mine. This is the Philosophy Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere. So it's very like sweet vanilla um musky so mm. i feel like these two together are just they're they're my scent love that i yeah. love layering perfumes Me too. i haven't so much been layering perfumes like i have different like seasonal scents mm -hmm. i feel like my fall winter scent is always very like potent intense intense so like i do something a little more sexy and like in your face and so i've been using the black opium eve saint laurent i really love this fragrance I feel like so it is a very fragrant mm -hmm. it's very scented and mm -hmm. just kind of sexy um and that I feel like it'd be too much if I layered it with anything else but I do a lot right. of what you do like more of the vanilla musky scents whereas this is just very like strong on its own but it's I sexy I, I love the scent of it for yeah. like the fall winter time so um this is actually from last year I've still been using it like I do things seasonally so yeah. Yeah, that's been my my perfume. So if you guys made it through the whole video, we appreciate you. I know this was a little something different for my channel, maybe not for everyone, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and had fun hanging out with Alyssa and I. If you guys wanna see more videos with me and Alyssa or you wanna see more makeup related videos, Clearly, we can talk for hours about makeup. It's what we love doing. So give this video a thumbs up. That lets me know what video go videos you guys do like. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I've had a little wine here tonight. So um, yeah, let us know what else you would like to see in the comments. Also, let us know, what do you wanna know in the comments? I wanna know like out of the products we used, what would you suggest we change up? Yeah. Like, do you have any suggestions for us? Like no, eat, that's crap, use this instead. Yeah, or, or like, do you have a good dupe for something we're using or is there something like we're totally missing out on based on our preferences, what you think we'd love? Or if you guys are using something that we're using too, let us know down in the comments what you think and talk makeup with your gals. We love it, so. It's just what makes us happy. It does, you know? it does. Yeah. It's, it's everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a makeup YouTuber. Please help me make that happen. <laughs> All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for hanging out with us. Wish my beautiful sister a happy birthday. Oh, Jesus. And we'll see you guys in the next video.